Jesus of Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen.
up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages.
Holy Gospel, peace be to all. Amen. Reading of the Holy Gospel of God. Of Amaeus, pardon and all their offenses, 
Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not made, of one essence of the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand aright, let us stand of fear, let us attend, that we may offer the holy oblation in peace. Across the 
grave, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting down at the right hand, the second and glorious coming again. Let us ask the 
eternal Son of God, accept me today as a communicant, for I will not speak in thy mystery to thine enemies. Neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the thief will I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be neither to my judgment nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen. <coughs> Your God and with faith and love draw
I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. I assume that uh, a congregation of nuns know the story of St. John Chrysostom, of his life. Uh, but if you'd like to brush up on it, I recommend uh, there's a book published back in the 1950s called The Holy Fire by Robert Payne. And it has a chapter on St. John. And he, he really uh, he writes these as a, as a narrative that really holds your attention and, and, and gives you the feeling of, of the time and place. So as I say, I assume you know about St. John. And of course, in this gospel passage, the Good Shepherd is our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But we always read this, as well as the passage from Hebrews about the great high priest. We read this on feast of pastors and priests, because the human pastors and priests are meant to be the image of and to make present the great good shepherd and high priest, our Lord Jesus Christ, both in shepherdhood and priesthood and often in rejection and suffering. And certainly that was the case with St. John Chrysostom. But we must be careful with this. I think probably every priest that gets criticized or in any way and has conflict in his parish may be tempted to identify with St. John Chrysostom, although sometimes we just brought it on ourselves. Uh, but especially we remember right now that our bishops have the fearful task of trying to discern who would be good shepherds. And sometimes we make mistakes. Uh, and certainly in the OCA we've had uh, a lot of problems with this and with our shepherds and now we're very afraid to choose any. And that's, I certainly don't envy the bishops, it's very hard to discern the good shepherd. So even, uh, I didn't know this uh, until I read last night, that even St. Jerome, who is considered a saint of the church, uh, sided with those who wanted to oust St. John Chrysostom. But another thought also today is the question of who are not the true shepherd, but who are the true sheep. In our Lord's discourse, we picture the wolf that he mentions as an outsider coming in to devour the flock. And that can happen, and we have many outside wolves today uh, harassing the pastors of the church sometimes, the government and the militant atheists and the militant Muslims and, and all that. But I think more often the wolves are in fact sheep. Or they had on sheep's clothing, as the proverb goes. But the wolves we most often encounter a part of the flock, many whom John Chrysostom thought were good sheep, turned out to betray him. The tares grow with the wheat until the end, and it's hard to discern which is which. So let us pray today for our shepherds, the bishops of the church, that they may discern who will be good shepherds for the flock. But let us pray also ourselves to be good sheep, who will know the voice of the real shepherds and follow them. And those of us who now are shepherds and abbesses, let us love our sheep. You know, the image there that they follow the shepherd. It's not that he's behind them, uh, ordering them along and
chasing them. He walks ahead and they follow because they know his voice. And so, by the prayers of St. John Chrysostom, let us love our flocks and be willing to lay down our lives if necessary for the chief. Glory to Jesus Christ. Serving coffee and light refreshments now in the hospitality room. Lunch will be at 1 o'clock. We'll be having a meeting today with the contractor and the architect, so we'll serve lunch at 1 o'clock. It's nice to serve with Father finally. Andy <laughs> Weems have this link through. I don't know if it's the miracle of the internet or the burden of the internet. I think most of the time it's a burden anymore. Because uh, I have to stay, I don't understand any of this, but uh, every time I go check my email, there's a little ping that comes up. And I think it's through Facebook or something. It's somebody wanting to talk to me. And you know, bing, and then you press this, and it's Father so and so, or is this so and so? And like, what are you doing now? Or what are you now? And it's just like, ah! I want to shut it off. So I do. I go and I shut it off, and uh, I go do something more edifying than, than checking emails. But uh, we, we clergymen have to do that these days. But uh, I, you know, as Father Paul said, you know, when we had that clergy list, uh, we made so many friendships because we were all over the country, but. You know, oh, who's Father Michael Senyo? Who's Father Paul Yerger? Never saw him sight, sight unseen, but I knew him through how he responded to, to notes and letters, and, and, and he knew me through my opinions and such. So, so, so this is a, a good thing about it. But it's wonderful to serve with you, and glad to have you in Pennsylvania. And going back to where now? Miss, Miss <laughs> Senyo. <laughs> <laughs> I <gotta> keep you. Thank <laughs> you. Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O God. I thank thee, O Lord, my God, for thou hast not rejected me as sinner, but hast made me worthy to be a partaker of thy holy things. I thank thee for thou hast permitted me, the unworthy to commune in life, thy most pure and life creating mysteries. I pray thee, gracious lover of man, preserve me under thy protection beneath the shadow of thy wings. Enable me even to my last breath to partake worthily with your conscience and holy things. For the remission of my sins and unto life, you sin. For thou art the bread of life, the fountain of holiness. We give our ball good. To be as master and God. We ascribe, may I pass from this life in the hope of eternal life, and so attain to everlasting rest. With the voice of those who feast is unceasing, and the gladness of those who behold the unspeakable beauty of thy countenance is unending. For thou art the true desire and ineffable joy of those who love you. Christ our God, all creation, sing thy praise forever. And Master Christ, our God, King of the ages, maker of all things, I thank you for all the good things thou hast given me. <coughs> Especially for the communion of thy most pure and life creating mysteries. I pray thee, our gracious lover of man, preserve me under thy protection beneath the shadow of thy wings. Enable me to my last.